All right, uh, thank you for joining us today. So in our webinar today, we'll be focusing on the rapid underground coal design, layout and scheduling uh, in Mindscape uh, Surface Engineer in Mindscape Underground Engineering. Uh, so before I start, I just wanted to let you know that our webinar will run for about 30 to 35 minutes and we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, when we begin, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Ripumelo Magamo, also known as Ribs, a mining engineer with a big smile, as you can see there. And um, I come from the South African office, recently moved to our Australia office. Been waiting for that amount for the past four to five years now. And then um, so we we'll look at our outline of our webinar. I'm going to talk about the background. I'm going to talk about the introduction of why we have to do this webinar for you and what are the benefits. And we we'll look at some few functionalities that we currently have. The UG predefined uh, uh, profiles that we have added in Mindscape uh, 2023. We have the automated long wall and we also have the room and pillar design that I'm going to show you how to do in Mindscape and we have the ability to generate the 3D solids and reserves so that we can take them to shed link and we we'll also show you the underground shed link. Once you're done with all the functionality, I'll give you a summary of, uh, of, Mindscape, of Mindscape underground engineering and then we'll have the Q&A session as mentioned. So I'll begin with the background or the introduction. So the question that you can ask, why did we develop the underground engineering capability or functionality? So we developed it because we realized that we spend more time on repetitive uh, a task on our CAD trying to generate the, the blocks that represent your room, your pillars, trying to draw using lines. So we actually created this to speed up the process because the process was actually consuming too much time that you spend too much time on your CAD instead of, of thinking of, of, of doing a design that is simple and quick. So this now can easily be done in Mindscape Underground Engineering where you have, you define your parameters for your room and pillar, you define your parameters for your long wall uh, through the forms that we have created to simplify our life and also to create accurate design quickly and fast. So what the form will do for you, it allow you to uh, generate automatically, uh, generate the 3D pillars, the road design for underground coal operations, be it the long wall or the room and pillar, depending on the operations that you add. And it's, sim it's a simplified uh, process flow to create a long wall mine design or to create a room and pillar design. And you will see as we go into detail how easy it is to do that. And it, it has seamlessly workflow. So the workflow is as uh, seamlessly, so it allows you to be efficient as an underground uh, mind planner, as an underground engineer. So you have a seamless uh, workflow, you have the inputs and the design to schedule and, and generate the reports. So first off, I'll start with the new profile feature that we currently have. So the new profile feature that we have, it allows you to define pre-existing profiles that we have in the software so that you can use it for your access or your deadline or your shafts or anything that you can use it, your tunnels. So it's a simplified way of creating different user profiles. You can create actually user profiles and save those user profiles. So you have the capability of saving the profiles for future use Use. If you have another project, you can use the profiles that you use in your mining operation. So in this quick demo, I'm showing you how to generate that. As you can see, I have, um, as you can see here, I have my working. You can see I have the profiles there. You have the predefined profiles or my profiles. What I have is I have a, a, an access ramp here. You can see a deadline in there that I currently have. And you can see it goes through the topography. It goes straight to my working at a certain elevation. So what you will need to do, so in this case, I was just showing you where the sim is. So it is going straight to sim C, which we are mining in this case. And then from there, you can come in and say, you know what, I want to generate a profile. 
and to generate a profile, you have your RAM done or your access defined. You have the predefined profiles which you can choose from. As you can see, you have different options. Oh, you can have my profile that you have set. I have one profile that I've set under there called the access profile. And in this case, I'll just click that and then place it for, for my access there, as you can see until uh, to just from the start there and then trace it to the end so you can see where your profile is going to end and once the software will do to generate some small uh, the, the mesh for you so you can see how your profile is moving so you can see your profile is, is going in down like that until you reach uh, where you, you're going to start your your long wall design or your room and pillar design thank you and then the next part is the long wall capabilities. So with the long wall capabilities, uh, we have a, a simple, straightforward process. And I'll show you how to quickly do your long wall design using this simple, straightforward processes. So it, you, you can complete your long wall uh, design quickly and you also save time. It gives you the capability, Mindscape gives you the capability to save the form for future use. And it's easy to generate the long wall layout. All you need is your input parameters, uh, the geometry, all the dimensions of your long wall and your main entries, and then you'll be able to generate that. So why did we do this? So you can stay focused on one form and you minimize the, the mouse movement of going up and down when you are in the CAD environment you're trying to generate lines and, fall, and so forth. Now, what you will need for the long wall, you will need the boundary. As you can see, I have a boundary and a center line. I'm going to go to the create long wall form. So you can see it's one form which is straightforward. All you need is the input. So the first input that you will need is your center line of where you're going to start your main entry for the long wall design. As you can see there, just pick up, pick that center line. So that's my center line, pick it up and you pick the boundary. What the software will do, it will actually limit it according to the boundary. You define the angle of your long wall or the orientation of a long wall and you define the long wall dimensions that you wish to use. So in this case, I have a, a long wall that is 250 by 1.5 kilometer with a barrier pillar of, 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 50, of 50 meters. And then you can move on to the dimensioning where you can on your main uh, entries, you can define the number of roadways that you want. You define the specifications. In your external gates, you define the number of roadway. Internal gates, you define the number of roadways too. And also in the face, you can do the same. You define the specification, the width of the roads, the pillar sizes. Uh, if you want uh, the cross cut angle, how do you want your pillars to be? The orientation of your pillar, you do the same for external gate, internal gate, and also the face axis. So once you're satisfied with the setting, you can click generate and it will generate the long wall for us. As you can see, uh, if you zoom in closely, you can see that you have five roadways in our main and then in the external gates, you have two roadways in the internal gates, you have three. And then in the face, you have uh, two roadways as we have defined it. Uh, so Mindscape allows you to do that. And one thing is, as you can see, my long wall is not at the end. What if I just want to change the length of my long wall? I can come and change the length of a long wall in here, change it to 2.5 kilometers or 2,500 meters. And all I have to do, the rest remains the same. And I can come into dimensioning. If you want to change the number of roadways or the pillar width, you can change it also. And you can click OK. And you'll see Mindscape will generate that for you uh, very quickly. And, the, and as you can see, and the beauty of it, it limits it according to the uh, boundary that you have defined. You can see your long wall only extend up until to the end of the boundary. It does not exceed the boundary that you have defined. So that is the capability of generating the long walls. You have the barrier pillars set up there. As you can see, you have your big long wall panels uh, set up there. And now you have your long wall. I can do the same for, for the second long wall, uh, depending on the orientation uh, that I wish to use. And then the next part is uh, the room and pillar capability. So we give you the ability to generate room and pillar. So you generate room and pillar. You can use 
uh, polygons that define your panels, or you can use center lines uh, that are in the middle of your panels. So you have those two options, and the software will do the rest. And also it comes back to, we are simplifying this for you. So it's a simplified workflow, allows you uh, to generate this quicker, and, and you also save time. Remember, it's all about saving time, and with the room and pillar, you also have the ability to join your pillars. So you can join your pillars to create barrier pillars for support uh, purposes, or you can split your pillars uh, for pillar extraction if you do pillar extraction. And this gives you the flexibility that you know what, if you have your pillars or your design, you can still adjust it according to your liking. So you have that capability of adjusting this according to your liking. And you can generate the extraction rates for each and every panel for the main entries for different panels that you currently have. And then let us jump into the software and quickly see how we can do this. So you can clearly see that in my design, I have uh, the room and the pillar section there. I have the polygon field, which I'm going to start with. You can see I have my polygon there that define my main entry. I can pick that polygon. So you can have this polygon coming from another software. You have done it previously, can define my pillar width. I can define my cross cut width and say, you know what? Uh, I can define my end distance and start distance. You can define the number of roadways that you want to have, and then the polygon your output. And how do you want to subdivide your, your, your main entry? You can divide into 100 meters. You define a, a different um, output layers there, as you see, click apply and then the software will generate that for us quickly. So it saves you time instead of having to go and and, and drape and, and project and copy parallel. So you can see, yeah, oh, I generated pillars and my pillars are like, why did I get these pillars? Oh, I made the mistake when I was uh, busy filling up my form. So I'm going to go back and correct it just to show you how quick it is. As you can see, my cross cut width was 100 instead of, of 20 or 10. So I'm going to put it at 10 and click OK, override that. And then the software will do the rest for us. You can see now it generates it accordingly. So it, it gives you that power and flexibility to do changes faster and quicker and you save time. And then now the next option is we can use line to pillars. If I have all the center lines that represent my panels in this case, I can pick all these lines. So you can, I'm just gonna delete this one and then pick it again. I'll go to row fill down. Yep, uh, so I have all my lines in there set up. As you can see, I have my heading width, my pillar width. So you define your pillar specification, the number of roadways that you want to have, and then the output where you want to output this. I'm just going to click OK. So it's going to generate uh, all this for us. So it's quickly generating and it's done. I'm just going to load that for you so you can see. So you can see I have all these and you can have the boundaries that represent your different panels there. So now once you have this, you say, you know what? I want to find out what is the extraction in each and every panel that I have. Oh, before we go there, we can join some of the pillars. You can join there saying, you know what? I want to create a barrier pillar for support purposes, or you want to adjust your pillars to the way you like it. You can join these pillars as you can see. I'm just going to join a few just to show you how it works. So it's easy to join them. We still give you that capability to join different pillars and say, you know what? I want to split it now there because there's no entry. I'm going to enter this one and then we're going to say we're going to split using a center line. You select the center line. You define the road width. Say, let's say 10. I'm going to make it 10. Click OK. And then click as able to split it for you. So you can use this functionality to do your pillar extraction. So anything complex that you wish to do. And then it will be able to generate that for you. So you can see in our design, the next part is saying, let's calculate the extraction and find out how much are we going to uh, get from this. So we're going to calculate the extraction. Just going to tell in the polygons that I'm using. Those are the polygons to find out how much of an extraction is. So I'm going to click OK. And then once I'm there, you see, quick tells you the extraction so I can go to view the report from there just to show you you can see you have the extraction rates you can see 59 60 percent or 59 so you can see how is the extraction rate going and you can go and do 
uh, pillar extraction if you wish to do pillar extraction and adjust accordingly to see what you're going to get at the end. And once you are, you are done with your design, what you can do, you can convert your design. Remember, design was on a plan view, so you can convert it into a 3D solid. So the whole idea of converting it to 3D solid is so that we can uh, run it in the scheduling. So, uh, excuse me, I'm going to. So the whole idea of converting our design into 3D solid is so that we can run it in our scheduling. And then what we do is underground design can easily be converted to 3D solid using our advanced uh, machine functionalities that we currently have. And when you convert this, you can go ahead and run the reserves with the extraction rates that you have defined. And you link these mining solids with the tactical shed link or underground shed link, and I'll show you how it all comes back together and it connects. So in this case, you can see I have my design here. So I'm going to look at this small portion. I'm not going to look at the whole operation. Just going to look at this uh, portion in here. Then you know what? I have my access RAM. Just going to focus on this area for this part and then just, just going to show you how to quickly generate the underground solid. So we have this new functionality creating solids. You can come and define your surface from a geological model. You can define your strut model in there. You can define the, the, the roof of your code. In this case, C roof, you can define the floor of your code. And, the, and one thing that I just want to mention in here is that you can actually have different expression that represent your surfaces, either an expression and say, you know what, from the sea floor going up by 2.5 meters. So you can create that and you can use those surfaces in there and the software will take those surfaces into account. So in this case, I'm just going to use the roof and the floor. The roof and the floor of my call seam. Go to the road design, you add your roads. And the long wall panels, you add your long wall panel, the panels, the limit, three options. You can create the limit around your polygon using the shrink wrap, or you can draw polygons, or you can pick a boundary that shows you. And then you're going to generate this, the long wall, into our mesh group called long wall one with roads and with pillars. And the pillar color will be our uh, cyan. Then click OK. Uh, just gonna quickly think. Uh, okay, there. So now the software will quickly generate uh, the mining solids for you. So you can see here, yeah, these are all the mining solids that you currently have. The underground, you can see the pillars there. You can see your different panels. You can see your main entries. Uh, you can see it was draped on the surface. So it's in 3D. So the software draped it on C floor. You can see the topography is no longer on plan view. You can clearly see it proper. Now I'm going to bring in the, the the access so you can see that we are able to access it there and then we are good to go to take it for a uh, shade link. So once we have this, before we go for shade link, what you can do, we can run the reserve for this. And it's just the run the reserve. What the software will do will run the reserve for you. Automatically, it picks it up that you are working on an underground environment. You pick your strat model, your, your quality model, your output of the reserve. Uh, you have some settings that you can add. So we are only looking at C and then all the qualities that we need for our reserve. Click up. OK, there we generate the reserve and you'll find it under tables. Uh, in my tables, I have my reserve file in my table, a uh, long wall one reserve, and you can see it generated these for each and every block. You can see the total volume, the mass. I can see the different qualities in there. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail in there. So once you have run this, the next part will be to take this information and you go and use it in the tactical uh, scheduling. So that will be the next part. So for the underground technical scheduling, we have done our 3D solids, we have run the reserve, we have done our design. We move on and say, you know what, for underground designs, it's, it's integrated with our tactical scheduling. So the Mindscape underground, we are integrating with a tactical scheduling and you are able to bring those solids in and then you generate this. But what are some of the key benefits for the, for the tactical scheduling? 
is that the data is stored in an SQL database, so you can be able to it, it's back that you you back up this data in there. You can use it for future. You can share it with your colleagues and everyone. Another benefit that we have is you can clone the project into new scenarios and different scenarios and run multiple scenarios. So this saves you time with all the setup that you have to do. So remember, it's all about uh, saving time. And then another thing that you can do, you can schedule and, and show the animation. We also have the screen recorder, a Mindscape that you can just use instead of having to use an external one. So you just use that and then it will generate uh, the animation for you. So let's quickly go into the scheduling part. So you can see a scheduling grip on here. You have your project set up, your equipment setting, your equipment hierarchy, uh, the other activities, the mind map, and everything. So I'm going to start and I'll create a new project. I'm going to just call it underground scheduling, underground scheduling. And then you can see you have the option to copy and you choose the mining tab. Is it underground or surface? You define your period in there, and then you can use the equipment utilization. You can pick a start date. Uh, when do you want to start it? You can use the equipment utilization or the real date calendar. And once that you have, you, it's connected to the database. As I've mentioned, you can see it's connected to my database. So everything that I'll do, all the setup will be backed up. The first thing is I'll set up my mind map from my long wall, I'm going to set up the mesh group that contains my long wall and the pillars, and we're taking it to the processing plan in there. And remember, and the under in the scheduling can have different setup and constraints, but yeah, we're just going to show you an overview. Then uh, once you're done with the with the mind map, you can go on and say, you know what? I can define all the equipments that I have. You can see I have the roof bolters, the LHD, the shuttle cars. Uh, so you can define all different equipments in here. You can add different equipments. You can categorize them into different groups and you can define the utilization and the availability of those equipment based on different periods that you currently have. And you can come and set up the cycle time for the continuous miner or the shuttle, the shuttle cars or the LHD. In here, I define the production rate for my continuous miner, and this case is like 950 tons per hour. And remember, you can use different uh, units uh, that you have defined in your project. I have activity mapping showing you how am I going to do my process. So I'll start with the phase preparation. I'll do the coal extraction, roof support, haulage and transportation. And in some cases, we can recover some of the support uh, structures that we have used. So in this case, I'm done with the sequencing. I'm just showing you a quick animation of how it animates. You can see it mine out all the uh, gates and it's mining out the panel in there. And once you're satisfied with that, you can send it to your boss. And the next part will actually to see the reporting. So from this, you can get the reporting. You have the gun chart also of scheduling, which is part of the underground scheduling. You get it there so you can set up and see which activity or which equipment follows which equipment. You can see different activities there. You can move it. So if you like doing it in the gun chart, you can actually move it here and save the gun chart. You can see quickly move it and say, you know what? I'm going to define my change my start time, save it. And then you can save that uh, report in your gun chart. And so once you have this, you say, you know what? You go and pick the sequence that you are using. You can generate uh, the, the, the pivot grid uh, report in this case. Uh, you can see define different periods uh, in there. The start, you can see how much you're taking cold in which month, in which period, and material quality is there. So you are able to do this. Just an overview of how the shading looks like. And what we'll do is we, we have another webinar that we look at the technical shading in detail. So that's why I did not go into too much detail. And then from everything that we have covered, I'm just going to go to the summary that you know what the Mindscape Underground Engineering is a rapid solution that allow you to to save valuable time with automated with its automated design. And so it gives you that flexibility. You save time, you generate your design quickly, and it's all about saving time. No need to go into the care processing and, 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 and generating small polygons for, that represent pillars. You did in the software, you can save all your forms. Everything is recorded. 
able to run the reserve, able to do the scheduling. And, and then just want to say thank you uh, for taking your time and joining us into our uh, short webinar that talks about the underground uh, call design, layout and scheduling. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can email us or you can visit our website or you can give us a call. Thank you.